Okay. We are on the topic of stoichiometry. We have one professional course devoted to this particular special topic to us, chemical engineering, chemical engineers. Uh, and uh, I think you will have this enrolled next semester. Stoichiometry, it's very, very important. So the basic I will discuss now, Dr. Pandan will follow it up to you next sem. Okay? Say again. If there are no questions, if you have any questions, just raise your hand. So feel free to interrupt in the process of the discussion. So we'll first define our learning outcomes. So we have a lot of learning outcomes here. They will all be interrelated in some way or some will be interrelated in some way, one or the other. Okay? When we end this topic, you should be able to define the term stoichiometry, the theoretical yield, the actual yield, and the limiting reagent, or we call it the limiting reactant. Then you should be able to determine the present composition of a compound. Uh, you know, present composition is so easy. All you have to do is divide the amount of a particular constituent by the total amount of the compound, and that gives you the percentage composition. Then you will learn here to determine the empirical and the molecular formula given the percentage composition of a substance. So you would be able to tell what is the formula of the substance in which the present composition is provided. Okay, so kinanan matapos in ang atapi kabalo ka mo sini. Then this one is fundamental. You calculate mole to mole, mass to mass, mole to mass, and mass to mole problems in stoichiometry, or shall I say, in relation to balanced chemical reactions. Then we solve problems involving limiting and excess reactants. Now, if some of these learning outcomes will not be all accomplished or realized within the day, we will finish it next week. So it doesn't have to be that we will finish the entire module today. So it depends really on your reception. Okay, then we determine the theoretical and the actual yield. Not only will you learn how to define it in the first learning outcome here, but you should be able to calculate, calculate theoretical yield. Okay, most of the actual yield actually class is given in the problem. Then solve problems involving gaseous stoichiometry. So chemical reactions involving gases. So we're just done with gases. Then calculate the amount of product expected from a chemical reaction given the amounts of reactants that were used. So before we can do this, if both amounts of reactants are given, there's a need for us to establish what is the limiting reagent. So part of the learning outcomes. Then second to the last, you should be able to calculate the amounts of reactants needed in a chemical reaction to produce a specified amount of product. Then identify a limiting reagent and calculate the amount of product formed from a non-stoichiometric mixture of reactants. So meaning in this case class, uh, you're not provided with the uh, stoichiometric mixture, but you're provided with the chemical reaction, but still you can determine the limiting reagent and calculate the amount of product produced from this particular limiting or basing it on the established identity of the limiting reagent. So these are our uh, two, four, six, ten learning outcomes. So they are actually interrelated to one another. So th there's just a few class, don't be overwhelmed. Some are even very, very fundamental. When you when we jump from one topic to another, you will realize this is how it's going to be. But it's really very simple. Just focus and ask questions if it's not clear to you or there are things that are not clear to you. Okay? So which brings about, since our topic is stoichiometry, what is stoichiometry? So stoichio. So Brown and Lee made the reference book 
the textbooks that were used 10 years ago, and even some of the books now that are current, like Wang and Chang, uh, College Chemistry by these two authors, would uh, define stoichiometry as the quantitative study of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. So you're provided with the chemical reaction, you are to tell how much of the products will be produced given the amounts of reactants, or it could be vice versa, given the, the product, how much of each of the reactants will be needed to produce that amount of product. If you will simplify the first definition, these are calculations based on balanced chemical equation. So that is stoichiometry, calculations based on balanced chemical equation. Now, what about fundamentals related to stoichiometry? So stoichiometry is a term used to describe quantitative relationships in chemistry. So it's only in chemistry where this particular topic on stoichiometry is first discussed. So how much of a product produced or reactant is consumed, then you are given a balanced chemical reaction. At times, it's not yet balanced. You will be required to balance it. So it's needed in this case. So without the stoichiometric relationship extracted from a balanced chemical equation or reaction, no amounts could be quantified. Kita quantify kita kuno sang amounts. Now, and also related to this is the conversion between mass or volume to number of moles. So if the original, um, original amount is in mass, you need to convert it to moles. If it's already in moles, good for you because there's no need for you to do conversion. If the original amount is given in terms of volume, you need the density of that material so that from volume, you're able to convert it to mass. And once in mass, it could now be converted to moles. So that's just how it is. Volume will need density to convert it to mass. And mass would be the, formula, the atomic weight or the molecular weight to convert it to number of moles. I'm sure this was as fundamentally discussed in your uh, chemistry then. Now, speaking of conversion, mass to moles, moles to mass or volumes to moles, there's a need for us to know the molecular and formula weights of substances. So formula weights, we write it as FW, is the sum of the atomic weights of the atoms in a formula. Okay, so in this case, the formula weight of hydro hydrofluoric acid, ah uh, no, sulfuric acid rather. Sulfuric acid is twice the atomic weight of hydrogen plus the atomic weight of sulfur plus four times the atomic weight of oxygen. So you see this, these are the multiplier to the atomic weights of each of these elements or substances or atoms as it is being referred to in here. Okay, you need the atomic weights of the atoms multiplied by the subscripts of these atoms as they appear in the formula of the compound or of the substance. So you have two times one. In the case of sulfur, its atomic weight is 32. In the case of oxygen, its atomic weight is 16. So you have to multiply it by four. And uh, the sum of these three terms is 98. AMU is atomic mass unit, short for atomic mass unit, equivalent also to the unit gram Per mole, if we talk about molecular weight of sulfuric acid. Any question here? Okay, there's none. So when we speak of molecular weight, it is the weight of the molecular formula. The molecular formula. So it's the same actually. The process of determining is the same as that of the uh, formula weight. So in here you have, this is very common, glucose. So molecular weight of glucose, it has six atoms of carbon, 12 atoms of hydrogen, and six atoms of oxygen. 
So in the same way that you have multiplied each of the atomic weights of the atoms here in the formula weight by their subscripts, as they are written in the formula of the compound, you do the same for the molecular weight based on the molecular formula of the provided substance. So maybe 6 times 12, 12 times 1 for hydrogen, and 6 times 16. This gives us the molecular weight of glucose to be 180 atomic mass units. So these are fundamentals. Uh, if you're, you don't need to be a chemical engineer even to know how to calculate for this. Okay, but nonetheless, I hope everybody follows through. If there are things that you think you cannot follow through, don't hesitate to ask clarifications. Okay? Never mind thinking that it may be simple as long as you get to learn. Hindi manumdum kay Miss wala ko siya ginapamangkot kay nahuya ko. Okay, do ka simple lang sa pamangkot ko. Don't mind, don't mind what they will think about you. Just what is important is to learn. Okay, so if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask, even if nobody is asking. Who knows, they will be silently, your classmates will be silently thanking you that you ask the same questions that they have also in mind. Okay, now we go to the mole. So when we use the balanced chemical reaction, we have this, we call mole to mole relationship. So as, so as such, it's very important that we define the mole and how do we determine the mole. So the mole is a convenient measure of chemical quantities. So one mole of something is 6.02 times 10 raised to 23. Or this is the exact value here. But most of the time, it's just written as 6.02 times 10 to the 20 to 23 of that thing. Uh, anybody here who can tell me what is this? Where did, where did this came from? One mole of something. It could be anything. This something could be anything. One mole of something is 6.02 times 10 raised to 23 of that thing. Where did this particular uh, relationship came from or where is it based upon? Anybody? It's fundamental. Where did this came from? 6.02 times 10 raised to 23. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Very good. So the 6.02 times 10 raised to 23 is actually Avogadro's number. So allow me to annotate so I can write here Avogadro's number. So Avogadro's number actually is 6.02. I'll just cut it from there, raised to 23. The numerator of Avogadro's number could be atoms, ions, molecules. It could even be particles. The denominator is always mole. That is why it is referred to in here as written one mole of something because we don't know really what this something is. It could be atoms of that thing. It could be ions of that something. It could be molecules of that something. It could be particles of that something. We always have 6.02 times 10 raised to 23 of that Thing, whatever that is. It could be atoms, ions, molecules, or particles. So everything, every something has the 6.02 times 10 raised to 23 atoms per mole or ions per mole or molecules per mole or particles per mole. The numerator that you choose to place here in your Avogadro's number really depends on what is this something is. So kung atom na siya, ti atom in mo di nga numerator. Kung ayon na siya, ti ayon man na di mo numerator. Kung molecule siya, molecule siya. Kung particles, then particles. But it's always based for every mole of that thing. 
Now, we take, for example, one mole of carbon-12. So we know that carbon has several isotopes. So one mole of an isotope of carbon, which is carbon-12, has a mass of 12 grams. Now, let's go to this. So experimentally, it says one mole of carbon-12 has a mass of 12 grams. Now, where was this based on? If this particular statement was based on Avogadro's number that I have written here, where was this based on? One mole of C12 has a mass of 12. Where was this based on? Anyone? You can write on the chat box if you don't have your mic. Yeah, it was based on, thing to mark, it was based on atomic mass. Okay? It was based on atomic mass. So you get your periodic table. You can look up the atomic mass of all the atoms, the elements presented in that table. So carbon has a mass of 12 grams. So 12 gram per mole is the atomic mass of the isotope of carbon, which is carbon 12. Now, when we speak of molar mass, this is the mass in grams of one mole of substance. So the units are gram per mole or gram mole raised to negative one. So it's actually this one that is written here, but stated differently. But nonetheless, they are really the same. They are connected to each other. Okay. Now we say that the mass of one mole of carbon 12 is equal to 12 gram. Or one mole of carbon 12 has a mass of 12 grams. So not, that's a different way of phrasing it, but it is to be understood in the same manner. So we express the amount of anything, especially when we're doing stoichiometry, we express the amount of materials or substances in terms of the very important unit, mole. Okay, it's defined here as the convenient measure of chemical quantities. Any question? Okay, none. So then we can move on. Now, so if I have here a single molecule of water, which has 18 grams of this particular molecule per mole of water or 18 atomic mass unit, Avogadro's number says that for every one mole of this water molecule, you have 6.02 times 10 raised to 23 molecules. So Avogadro's number of molecules, because this is a water molecule, is 6.02 times 10 raised to 23. As long as, so let me emphasize this, as long as we're talking of one mole, one mole of water. Just like saying one molecule or rather one mole of water has 6.02 times 10 raised to 23 molecules of water. Okay, so this is the implication of the Avogadro's number. Since water here is a molecule, so the number of molecules for every mole of this substance water is Avogadro's number. Okay, so that's the mole associated to the Avogadro's number associated to the number of particles. In this case, class, the specific particle that is used here is molecule because atoms, ions, molecules can be the particles or particles could really be different than that, especially if we're not referring to any uh, molecule of substance, but a composite substance already. So we may refer to them as number of particles because your substance is composite. But if your substance is a molecule, then it's really number of molecules. If your substance is an ion, it should really be a number of ions. If your substance is an atom, it would really be number of atoms, all of which is measured per mole of that particular substance. So I think I have overly emphasized it already. I hope everybody follows too. Okay, now, to even simplify things, so you have here in the case of nitrogen, 
this is an atom of nitrogen. Its formula weight, so it's referred to as formula weight because this is the formula of nitrogen, is 14. Its molar mass, the mass of one mole, is 14. Now look at here on the last column, the number and kind of particles in one mole. So it was specific now that the 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 now use nitrogen atoms. We did not write nitrogen ions because nitrogen is not an ion. It's an atom. We did not write nitrogen molecules because this is an atom. We didn't write number of particles because we know for one that this is an atom. We just use particles when we don't know the identity of the thing that we're trying to uh, determine the number of. So this is how we represent it in terms of Avogadro's number. Now, what about if we have already a molecular form of nitrogen? So we just don't have an atom of nitrogen, but now we have two atoms of nitrogen. So naturally, you need to multiply the atomic mass of your nitrogen by two because you already have a substrate two. So it's 28. Now, what is the mass of one mole of nitrogen gas? By the way, gases are presented most of the time in formulas as bimolecular, meaning the subscript is always two. And in here, it's written as 28, so the same as the formula weight. Look at the manner in which the number of molecules are written. So 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 nitrogen, so N2, not N, N2 molecules. Now, look very closely what happened here. Oh, it's now 2 times 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 N atoms. Why is it multiplied by 2? Anybody who can explain why is it now this time multiplied by 2? Not only 6.022 times 10 raised to 23. Can somebody explain this? Why the two here? Meaning, class, this could be this could be written in this manner in terms of molecules, and we can also write it in terms of atoms. Now, anyway, okay, let's read. Yanong, two ia multiplier, yes. So two ia multiplier. Na atuwa may multiplier siyang two. Okay, we'll read the answers here. Because of the subscript of nitrogen mass. So this is tungod sa N2 mass. Yes. Okay, I want you to look closely. Paano take ko ah? Dapat, as it is given here, ang pag-express ang number of particles, sini, Dapat, originally, molecule man. Kid kay molecule niyang given, no? Ang atom niya, Ario. So, amo na siya nga kung Avogadro's number lang ang basihan ta. Kung number of molecules, amo gini siya ya ang answer. So, for a molecular formula for nitrogen N2, you have this much of N2 molecules. Now, what if hindi siya ya mamangkot sang nitrogen or N2 molecules. What if the problem will be asking you the number of nitrogen atoms, take note, huh? the number of nitrogen atoms in this molecule of nitrogen. Now, since your answer here is molecule, it's just like a case of dimensional analysis wherein you work your way through to the units that you desire. So, ang answer mga original, 6.022 times 10 raised to 23. Diba molecules ni? Now, what if ang problem is saying no? Ah, okay, I place here N2. I miss N2 molecules. What if the problem, I'd like to know the number of N atoms in this N2 molecule. So this is already N2 molecule. So you need to convert. For every one and two molecule, or molecule, 
how many atoms of nitrogen you have? Two atoms of N. So this cancels, this cancels. Now you have atoms N. And this is N atoms here. But the original way they should be asking you for the number of particles would have been molecules because this one is given in terms of a molecule. Kaso lang kung may mamangkot siya sa number of atoms in this molecule, then there's a need for you to convert from molecule here to atoms. Is that clear? Is the explanation clear? Because it's really very fundamental and there are students who cannot follow, who cannot understand this. So I hope this is understood. Is this clear? Any question here? No, not. So if you have silver, so silver, ho, atom siya, no? Ang formula weight the silver is its atomic weight also. If you have your periodic table there, it's 107.9. What is its smaller mass? The same thing, 107.9. Now, since you're given atoms, anong answer niya di? Silver atoms. Still the same number. What about this now? The second to the last row. Ayon. Your silver was not written in the form of an atom, but it has already a charge on its formula. So meaning this is already a silver ion, or we have silver ions. Still the same formula weight, still the same molar mass, but look at this. This time, the original representation of the 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd is now silver plus one ions because you are given silver ions. Okay, you did not say in this case 6.00 times 10 raised to 23 silver atoms because this is not an atom. This is an ion. So you have to distinguish atoms from molecules to ions. Because as presented to you in the previous slide, your Avogadro's number can have any of those units in the numerator. Now, we'll have the last here, barium chloride. So, actually, it's a molecule. Now, it could also be that the problems will be talking of molecules class as units. So, pwede man na siya ibutang molecules, pwede man siya mabutang gira units. Although this unit thing for units is very, very seldom or not used at all. But molecules can be referred to also as units. So, again, it's written here 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 barium chloride units. Or it could be barium chloride molecules. Now, in this barium chloride units or molecules, if you bring it down to writing it in form of ions, we annotate, it would be equivalent to this class. This is Be plus 2 and chlorine ions. In your chemistry, high school chemistry, you were taught that the ion barium present in barium chloride has an atomic charge or has an ionic charge rather plus two. It came from the subscript here and chlorine is negative one because we crisscross. Uh, if this is plus two and this is minus one, we crisscross it when we write it in the formula already. So the reason why you see here 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 barium ions is because for every one molecule of this isaka molecule some barium chloride you also have one barium ion so the pariho man sinisang ginsulata sa babaw so let me erase this part para clear so stand ko siya ha para makita niya okay <clears throat> 
in the case of the barium chloride units or barium chloride molecule, for every one barium chloride unit, how many barium atoms you have? This is understood to be one. Wala man di subscript, so this is understood to be one. So you have one barium ion. So you converted the barium chloride units or molecules to barium ion. And since their multiplier is one, it's the same thing. It's, this, it's different when we talk about chlorine. Because this is your chlorine anion, and now your chlorine has a subscript too. So we change again. So we erase this one. Oh, I did I erase everything? So we say barium chloride units and one barium chloride unit has two chlorine ions. Where is this two? Based on this one, the subscript of chlorine in barium chloride formula. Do you get it? That's how fundamentals our understanding should be if we convert from one type of particle present in a given thing, that, that, that thing is that something that's where, that was referred to in the previous slide. Something could be molecule, could be atom, could be ions. Generally, it could even be particles. So that's how we interchange from one unit to another. So we cancel this one here. And we have chlorine, two chlorine ions in the numerator. So that's the reason why you have times two in here. Do you get it? Any questions? Okay. No question? Okay, let me just check what's on the next slide. Okay, you can have a five minute break because it's one, it's 2.36 here in my time. You can have a five minute screen break. We come back 46. Not, no, 2.41. Okay, 2.41. Okay, you can have your break now. I will pause our recording here. Okay, share screen again. So we fully know we are now good with the interconversions of the different units that is appropriate for the number of particles depending on the kind of something or on the some material that is provided to you using Avogadro's number. So now we're ready to convert mass, mass, and number of particles. So when we speak of molar mass, it's the sum of the molar masses of the atoms. So just like in the previous example, when we speak of the molar mass of nitrogen, written as a nitrogen molecule consisting of two atoms of nitrogen, so that would be two times the molar mass of nitrogen. So molar masses for these elements are found in the periodic table. So formula weights, on the other hand, are numerically equivalent to the molar mass. So whatever is the molar mass of that thing, that is also its formula weight. Of course, primarily because the formula of that thing is based on the provided uh, molecular uh, formula of that thing, whatever it's that, or the atom of that thing, or the molecule of that thing. So in here, you could see that from moles, we can use Avogadro's number to determine the number of formula 
units. So formula units class could be atoms, could be ions, could be molecules, could be even just a simple case of units, just like as it is presented to you a while ago. So in terms of moles and mass, so you can interconvert grams to moles or moles to grams using the molar mass or using the formula weight or using the molar mass. They all the same they mean the same thing. So in here, you need to use the molar mass in interconverting grams to moles or moles to grams. You need to use the Avogadro's number in converting from moles to a desired number of units, formula units or particles, which could come in any of the four forms that I have mentioned a while ago. So we will continue. So these are exercises. Okay, wait, class. Ha, hindi siya kita nyo ng exercises that I place. Let me. Okay, okay. I stop sh screen sharing, class. Ha, wait lang. It's not able to transfer from my original slide the exercises. So let me just share to you the original slide, class. Uh, anyway, this is just a form of an exercise. Okay. Uh, wait, I will share again. Share, share screen, okay. This is my original uh, slide. Let me share this to you. So as an exercise in your chairs there, we have already determined glucose a while ago. So this time you will determine sodium chloride. This is an organic material. Anybody who knows the name of this? Anyone who knows C286? Do you have your organic chem in high school already or no? Or not? So what? Ethane is a mix. Again? Ethane. Type it, please. Hindi ko kain hindi mayo. So, what is this? C two H six. What's the What's the name of this organic compound? It ends with an ain, not in, because it's ethane. Ethane C two H six is ethane. Okay. Let me check myself. Okay, I don't want to teach you something that I'm not sure of, because I got my organic chem. More than 30 years, 35 years ago. Wait. Uh -huh. I cannot. I will share a new screen. Class, ha? To check what, uh, what was provided to us. Anyway, I can't share because it has. So I stop sharing. I go to the web. Okay. Nobody holds the monopoly of knowing everything all at once. My neurons are already not working. So ethane, let me check. Formula weight. Okay. Para colorful ang life. Let me see. Here it is. I'd like to share it to you. I took it from the web. So this is your ethane, this one. Two atoms of carbon, and we have six atoms of hydrogen. We will study organic chemistry in detail, maybe next sem. I think it's next sem. So this is your compound ethane. Thank you for the one who provided me with the answer. Okay, so this is ethane. So we go back to our... Uh, to your exercise. Okay, share screen again. So please get your atomic, uh, your periodic tables and provide me with the weights of these compounds, of these molecules in here. So glucose, we need not anymore because uh, we have discussed it a while ago. So in here for sodium and chlorine, who can give it to class? Can we give your answer? Para hindi ka matulugan. So, sodium is? 
That's the atomic weight of sodium. Uh, Kyle says that the formula of sodium chloride is 58.54, uh, 44 rather. So John also gave 58, so without the decimal. So what about the others? What's your answer for sodium chloride? Uh, in this topic class, by the way, you should have your periodic table. Okay, 57.99. Uh, okay, 58.44, 58. Okay, so when you, it's nice that you're writing here in uh, the chat box for your answer. When you use the values that you have in periodic table in determining the weights of compounds, uh, even that of atoms, please use uh, up to second decimal places. Reflect in your answer up to second decimal places because it really matters if you're, you're going to cut off or round off your answer to the nearest whole number. When you do your computations also, or your calculations, use up to two decimal places. Okay, so that's it. Pearl also wrote there, Evaristo, Kasi, Kasi, Kasi. Kasi John. Kasi John. Very unique combination of name. Lady. Is this a lady? Casey John. John is G A G A H N. So Kessel also right. Barry 58.4. Okay. Okay. Nice to meet you, Casey. I have one favorite student there. The name Den. His name is Kasi. I call him Kasi. Is now married. Anyway, so now next we go to uh, ethane. So you know carbon is 12, hydrogen is 6. So you have 24 and 6, that would be 30. Correct, Pearl. Automatic na, no? Iti kabalo na tas ang formula weight. Sang atomic weights ni carbon kag hydrogen. Okay, come on. Okay, Beatrice also wrote 30. Sodium hydroxide. 16 plus 1, 23, 40. So, is it 40? Correct. So, sodium is 23, oxygen is 16, hydrogen is 1. 40. Correct, Marion. Carbon tetrachloride. So, CCL4. You have chlorine is 37. I'm not sure. Times 4 plus 12. I'm not sure. They can memorize and predictable. I have very poor memory. So, kindly check. Uh, Carlos Manuel, 153.8, 153.82. Correct, 153.76. Correct. So, ang inyo predictable, gani, hindi pala riho ang up to second decimal place ng answer. How much more kung i-cut nyo ang inyo answer to only the nearest whole number. So, everybody knows how to use their periodic table in finding the molar masses of compounds okay so very good thank you for participating everyone we proceed with what is written on the next slide so wala ko mabutang ang exercises ko anyway when i will share it to you uh, the slide it will already be updated in the updated form so let me go back to our slide so i have a blank exercise there and i'll go here so we go to the use of the percentage composition of formulas in determining, so very important in class, in determining empirical formulas and even empirical formulas to molecular formulas. Okay? Okay, so this is totally new. Please listen intently and let's see later. We will have an exercise after this. Whether you have absorb what you need to absorb in here. So we go to percentage compositions from formulas. So percent composition is the atomic weight for each element. Take note, huh? I've mentioned this a while ago. The atomic weight for each element divided by the formula weight of the compound multiplied by 100. So the percentage of a particular 
element in a compound is actually its atomic weight in that particular uh, formula divided by the formula weight of the compound times 100. However, if you look intently on the formula that is provided here, if that particular element has several atoms present in that compound, you need to multiply the atomic weight of that element by its number of atoms present in the formula of the compound. So atoms of the element times its atomic weight divided by the formula weight of the compound times 100. That's the percentage of that element in that particular compound. Okay? Let me see if we have here an example. Now, let me check. Okay, that's already the... That is already the application of this. So I will give one. We'll go back to the exercise that we used a while ago. Let's go to this. Let's see if you can do this. Okay, this one. I'd like to use the glucose here. Let me annotate. Can you provide me the uh, I'll use this as an example for that particular uh percentage composition. So for glucose, we have six atoms of carbon. We have 12 atoms of hydrogen. And we have six atoms of oxygen. Then this must be six times 12. This must be 12 times one. And this must be six times 16. In this case, this would be 72. Right, this would be 12 and this would be 96. Right, then it would be 10 carry one. So, this is 10. The formula weight of glucose, same thing with its smaller mass, the same thing with its small formula weight is 180 gram per mole. If I intend to determine percentage of carbon. Percentage of hydrogen and percentage of oxygen, it would be very easy since anyhow, I have already each of the answers for the number of atoms multiplied to the atomic weights of each of these elements present in my formula of the compound. So I'll place here 72 over 180 times 100. This one is 12 over 180 times 100. This one is 96 over 180 times 100. Now, can you supply me with the answer here for a percentage of carbon? Okay, percentage of carbon. Is this for... Okay, 40. Thank you. What about hydrogen? Thank you, Pearl and Janessa. Hydrogen is? 6.67. It follows then that this oxygen must be 53.33. Right? Because I only need to subtract the sum of these two from 100. Or if you really solve it, it would really be this. Because this should be equal to 100. Okay? Anybody? So easy as to determining the percentage composition of compounds. Anybody has a question here? Okay, are we, can we proceed? Let me clear my markings. Can we proceed now? Okay, then we go back to our original slide. So I have shown to you how, determine, how to determine the percentage composition of each of the elements present in the compound. 
Now we go to using the percentage composition in determining the empirical formula. So determination of empirical formula from mass percent. Well, that's the percentage composition by mass that we got a while ago using the formula of glucose. So you have here the steps. So uh, assume that you are provided with 100 grams of that material or substance. That's the first step. The second step is you determine the most of each element of each of the element in that particular material or compound by using the atomic weights with the mass that you have determined, assuming that you're provided with 100 grams of that material. So if you assume 100 grams of material, you can determine each of the elements present, their masses, because you're given the mass percentage. Then you convert the individual masses to moles. So determine most of each element in the compound. Next, divide all subscripts in empirical formula by the lowest number because the number of atoms must be an integer. So whatever is the number of moles of each, whatever is the smallest value there, you use it as a divisor for the rest. That should give you the number of uh, the number that will appear in the subscript of that particular formula. What do you mean by that, Miss Ali? So let's see, we'll have this. So percentage by mass of the elements, you assume a 100 gram sample, determine the grams of each of the elements, and using atomic weights, convert grams to moles. And once already in moles, calculate the mole ratio choosing the least of the number of moles that you have computed, then you have the empirical formula of the compound. Okay, now how is this to be done? Let us check. Okay, so let me proceed. Anyway, we can go back to these steps later when we have an actual illustration. Uh, you can have this presented in this manner. It's the same thing. Okay, so we will now determine the empirical formula of para-aminobenzoic acid. Uh, it is uh, listed as PABA in sunscreens that are being used. So it's composed of 61.31% carbon, 5.14% nit uh, hydrogen, 10.21% nitrogen, and oxygen 23.33%. Now, since PABA, para amino benzoic acid, is not a common compound, we will determine its formula, specifically its empirical formula based on this percentage composition that is given and based on the steps here. It's the same steps that I have placed in here. Okay? So let's go to our jump board for this. That way I can illustrate without having to keep on erasing. Because, huh? Let me check if I have my jump board already. I have not yet opened it. Let me just open it, guys. Okay. Jump board, where are you? There you go. Okay, that's it. So I will not anymore keep going back and forth uh, to our slides. I will just write here the percentage composition of our, of our compound PABA as I read them from the slide. That way we will not incur time having to keep on uh, going from one slide to another. So we'll have here 61.31% carbon. So I'll place here percentage. Let me know, please let me know if you don't have the slide. So percentage carbon, 
61.31%. Let me know if you don't have, if you can see Jamboard, but if you can, it's okay. Then the next thing that we are to pick is the hydrogen, which is 5.14. I sent hydrogen. So we have 5.14. This is for our PABA. And next is nitrogen, 10.21. Ten point twenty one. Next is oxygen twenty three point thirty three. Twenty three point thirty three. Okay. If you check, this should be one hundred. So you have here. Uh, five, this is nine, this is uh, four, you have six, you have nine, and you have here six, you have nine, and you have here six, nine, and you have here nine. So it's 99.99, .99, meaning the 0.01% here are the impurities in the formulation of our PABA. So this is the percentage composition of our amino benzoic acid. Okay, we will convert, uh, we will rather determine the empirical formula by first assuming that we have 100 grams of this. So 100 grams of PABA. So that's an assumption. So if we have 100 grams of PABA, we will now determine the individual mass of each, which is just equivalent to this. So right away, I can write here, huh? in terms of mass, that's the first, that's the second step. You have 61.31 grams. You have 5.14 grams. You have 10.21 grams. And you have 23.33 grams. Okay, from mass, what's the next step? We convert to moles. So kindly divide your carbon here by 12 and supply me with the answer here. So 61.31 divided by 12. I have 5.14. Yes, are you still there? Okay, thank you. So you have 5.11. 5.11 moles. Now for, uh, let me just transfer this. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the answers. Hydrogen, since it's just one, so this is 5.14 moles. For nitrogen, it's 10.21. So this is uh, divided by 14. What's our moles here? 0. 0.73 <clears throat> moles. And last, 23.33 divided by 16. 1.46 moles. Okay, so this is the third step. Okay, from assuming first step, we get second step, conversion to mass, mass to moles. Now, the next step would be choosing, am choosing amongst this number the least and using it as a divisor for all. So what's the least here? That would be 0.73. So you divide this by 0.73. You divide this by 0.73. You divide this by 0.73. We divide this by 0.73. So you will have a corresponding answer for this three. Can you please give me the answers for carbon? Nitrogen is already one. I think this is two. What about carbon and hydrogen? Uh, carbon is seven, hydrogen is also seven more or less. <clears throat> Would it matter? 
think not much. What about hydrogen? Hydrogen is still seven point something. 5.14, 7 7.04, very small. So that's it. So it's, I, it's really important that you get to see this to be not a whole number because it's not all the time class that you'll get a whole number. So that is why I'm waiting for the actual answer in here. This could be approximated to 7 because it's very small. So when you write the formula for PABA, then that's the empirical formula of PABA, therefore, write it here, therefore, Therefore, the formula for your PABA is C7, H7, O2, N. So normally, it's written as CHON. Well, you can write it as CH and O. Okay? So you write here the number, 7 atoms of carbon, 7 atoms of hydrogen, 2 atoms of oxygen, and 1 atom of nitrogen. So that's our PABA. What happened if we Google it? Okay, PABA. Okay. Kasi si Google isang click lang. So you will have the answer right away. PABA. Empirical formula. Okay. okay. I'm not going to go to the Larawan. This is it. So... It's written, I'd like to share it to you. Let me share. Where is it? Is this it? Okay, this is our para amino benzoic acid, C7H7NO2. CH, C7H7NO2. Okay, so very easy to follow, no? Ang procedure. Just don't forget the procedure. There's nothing critically to think here. You just need to follow the procedure. So let's go back to the slide. Uh, this is our slide. So this is to be written as C7H7NO2, parabenzoic acid. Okay. Now, will you clear the drawings? Please just raise your hand or just speak in your microphones if you have any questions. So we go to the next part here. And that's on the determination of the molecular formula from the empirical formula. So only empirical formula can be determined by mass percent. Cause let me... Uh, uh, Annotate in here. This is very important. Only the empirical formula, it's only the empirical formula that can be determined by mass percent. So meaning we don't determine the formula of the compound based on the mass percent, but rather it is based on the actual molecular mass, the actual molecular mass of the compound. Let's say, for example, uh, example, you have a compound in which the molecular mass is 200. Okay? Sample. The molecular mass is 200. If you determine the empirical weight or the empirical mass to be only 100, what do you mean by that, Ms. Ali? Example lang, ha? Uh, C7, H7, NO2. This is for our PABA, our empirical. Can you compute for the empirical weight of this empirical formula? 12 times 7 plus 7 plus 13 plus 32. Can you give it to me? So I can show to you how to determine the molecular formula from the empirical formula. Can you determine, please, the empirical weight of this empirical formula? Seven times. Okay. Thank you. We have here 137. Thank you, Pearl. So it's 137. Okay. 
let me just clear ha this is not the molecular weight this is the empirical weight because it's based on the empirical formula if you are to determine the molecular formula for PABA, you should be provided with the molecular weight. Again, this is empirical weight. This is the empirical formula. Okay, I'm referring to this. I'm referring to this. If you want the molecular formula for PABA, it may be the same as the empirical formula. It may not be the same as the empirical formula. It depends on, hear me this, it depends on the molecular mass of PABA that is provided in the problem. For example, the problem said that the problem said the problem says that the molecular weight of PABA, okay. The molecular weight of PABA is 274. What do you think did I do? Did I not multiply this by 2? So the process of determining the molecular formula of PABA from its empirical weight and from the molecular weight that is provided by the problem is you divide this by this. Gin example, ko lang niya class ha, it could be that you'll be given a different amount here. But what is certain is based on what we saw that the empirical weight of PABA is really 137 based on its empirical formula. Now, if I want if the problem will continue and ask you for the molecular formula of PABA, PABA, if its molecular weight is 274, the given amount of the molecular weight should be divided by the computed amount of the empirical weight taken from the empirical formula. So if you divide 274 by 137, the answer is 2, right? So that number... That answer, as you can see here, molecular molar mass or molecule molar mass divided by the empirical molar mass. So 274 divided by 137. In this case, in the example I've cited, your multiplier is 2. Now, what's the purpose of the multiplier? All the subscripts that appear in your empirical formula should be multiplied by this multiplier. So then we conclude, therefore, that the empirical, that rather the, I'll place here the conclusion. So this is the molecular weight as given in the problem. So then we can say that the molecular formula of PABA is C14, H14, N2O4. We multiplied the numbers, the subscripts that appear here. This is to be under, this is understood to be one, and this is to by the multiplier that we got in here. Question. Miss, will the molecular mass be provided? Of course. Why? Because it's stated here. Only the empirical formula can be determined by mass percent. So meaning, kung ang problem naghatag lang sa imo, ang percentage composition sa compound, imposible nga maapaansera niya pag sa imo ang molecular formula unless the problem gives you the molecular weight or the molecular or the molecule molar mass. Why? Because that's your uh, value here in the numerator. You need to divide it by the empirical molar mass taken from the determined empirical formula. That should give you the multiplier. Do you get it? Do you get it, class? Do you have any questions? Point of clarification before I move on. So the molecular mass or the molecule molar mass or the molecular weight should be provided by the problem.
and what you can determine from the percentage by mass of a particular compound or substance is only the empirical formula. Without the provided mole molecular weight or molecule, molecule molar mass, you cannot determine the molecular formula. Okay, ang subscript sa molecular formula class most of the time is higher by a multiple to the subscripts that appear in the empirical formula of a substance. Do you get it? Any question? Before I erase my markings here, can do everybody follow the discussion? Okay, so I think everybody can follow the discussion. Let me go back to the original slide and check whether I have exercises there for you to do. Okay. Okay. Sige. I'll give this as an exercise. Um, let me annotate. I will just choose the things that you need to determine here. Convert the following to moles. I like this converted to moles. And this one to moles. And convert the following here in the second batch of exercises to milligrams. So you, some have millimoles. So this one, I'll choose this one, millimole. And this one. Okay. Okay, I'll give you, what time is it? What time is it? Let me check. Oh, three. 20. Okay, you will submit the answer of this, of the items I checked in the uh, Google Drive, which I provided for everyone. So you will have individual submissions of this. So you have four items to submit. The deadline would be 12 midnight tonight. Okay, so that way you will not have something to do on the days that you're supposed to be free. Okay, this is just an exercise to follow what we have discussed this afternoon for me to check as well whether you fully understood what was discussed. So will you, can you take a screenshot of this that way later when you do your own thing, you write your solution in a piece of paper, take a screenshot and submit in your personal Google Drive. Okay, do you have any question as to how it's going to be accomplished? That way we have a way of checking whether you know how to go about the conversion of the simple units, moles to mass and mass to moles. Any question? So this is individual, this is not by groups. Okay, there's a question. Can we ask for the PowerPoint, miss? Uh, this one is my original PowerPoint. I cannot give it to you because I have updated it already. But what I am sharing to you, the one in blue, will be really shared to you once it is updated already. You will be provided with a PowerPoint. This one, this exercise that you will be required to submit later, will not really require the PowerPoint because anyway, it's just simple. Oh, mass to moles. And here, mole to mass. All you need to use will be the formula weights the, that are to be solved from the atomic weights in your periodic table. Okay? I will provide the slides, but when it is already updated, they didn't update the question. Okay, so take a screenshot of this. Anyway, the instruction is very clear. You will only need your periodic table here in your calculator. Mass to moles. And here you have 
uh, mass to moles and this one is mole to mass in milligrams. Okay, sige, sige, no problem, no problem. Okay, so we can go to the next topic, okay? I will end the class by 4 p.m. so that you will have a breather. Probably you still have your next class after this. Oh, by the way, I was the one who made your schedule. There's no class after this. Since you're first year students, I made sure that there will be no classes after 5.30. Okay, then we'll go to the next. I guess again, let's see. So we have that. And then we go to this elemental analysis, analysis of compounds. Um, compounds containing other elements are analyzed using methods analogous to those for carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the process is what we call elemental analysis. So when we do elemental analysis, this is where stoichiometric calculations can, can come in very handy. So meaning we will really be using the stoichiometric calculations. So as an example here, so we have the common equation representing the uh, reaction between hydrogen and oxygen forming water. So in this case, we have two moles of hydrogen gas reacting with one mole of oxygen gas forming two moles of liquid water. So two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen producing two molecules of water. So as to the mass, of course, this one has four AMU, four atomic mass units, this one has 32, this one has 36. Now you may ask why means four in here? Because each two is one plus one for its mass, for its molar mass or molecular mass. You multiply it by two because of the coefficient that you see here before the formula of hydrogen. So that makes it four. For oxygen, since we only have one, since we have also atomic weight for oxygen as 16, so we only need to multiply it by two. So you have here 32. In the case of two moles of water or two molecules of water, water as a compound has a mass of 18. You have two as a coefficient here, so that 18 should be multiplied by two giving you 36 atomic mass units here for water. Now, from atomic mass units of these substances that is seen in the stoichiometric equation or a chemical reaction, you can convert to moles. So you have here four AMU of H2 divided by two moles or rather two grams per mole, so that will give you two mole of H2. Again, so you have here four atomic mass units for H2, but H2 has two grams per mole. Two grams per mole ni siya kay duha ka hydrogen, no? Kung isa lang, kung H lang ang pagkasulat sa iya, one gram per mole lang. Kay H2, so two grams per mole. So, 4 grams per mole, because AMU is also grams per mole, divided by 2 grams per mole will give you 2 moles of H2. This one is 32 divided by also 32 grams per mole, so you have 1 mole O2. 36 for water divided by uh, 18. This one has 18. 18 grams per mole for the molecule of water will give you two moles of water. Or better yet, class, you refer to the coefficients that appear here in the stoichiometric equation or in the balanced chemical reaction. 
whatever number you see here, that would be the same number of moles that you will be seeing here based on dividing the masses that is written in this row, in inga row, puro nitanan mass, by the weights of the substances that appear as written. So, ini siya ang weight niya, 2 grams per mole. So, ang muna siya gin-divide mo ang 4 sa 2. Ini siya 36. So, ang muna 1, ah, sorry, 32. Because 16 times 2. So, you also have 1 here. Ini siya 18 lang. So, 36 divided by 18, that should give you 2. If you don't want it to be cumbersome, then look at the coefficients. We call this coefficients that appear before the substance in the balanced chemical reaction. Oxygen is understood to have a coefficient of one. Okay, so this in terms of mass, you have four here. In terms of mass, you have 32 here. And in terms of mass, you have 36 here. The initial means gain base, ang ininga mass, nakabase na siya dere. Okay? Sa... Um, mass sang two molecules of hydrogen. So you already took into account the coefficient of hydrogen here, molecule of hydrogen. So you have four, in here you have 32, in here you have two times 18, you have 36. But that's also based on the A in U here. Now, there's something written below that says the coefficients in the balance equation give you, take note of this, this is very important, the coefficients, it's the coefficients. What are the coefficients in A? I wonder it. The coefficients in the balance equation give you the ratio of the moles of reactants to products. Just like how we uh, read this, how we should read this from... Um, in the view of chemical engineering students, we say... Two moles of hydrogen is reacting to one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of water. Okay, we base the number of moles on the coefficients of the what? Of the balance. So number one, tagig na obrahon class, nagindi, hindi dapat ka mumalipat, na ibalansi hon, anay, ang chemical reaction that is provided to you or you check whether the provided chemical reaction is already balanced. If not, step one always, balance before you do the next calculations because the rest of your computations will be dependent on this balanced chemical reaction and the corresponding coefficients of the substances that appear on its uh, elements uh, on its substances or we call it also species in your balanced chemical reaction okay i will use i will use the remaining time later to discuss the intro to using uh, coefficients in the balanced chemical reaction in determining amounts later okay so I will have, we'll give you another five minute break para makatindog, maka-exercise ka modera, drink water, then we'll come back. Uh, my time here is 3.37. We come back, 3.32 rather. So we come back 3.37. Okay? Sige. Matindog, tindog, tanay. Breathe. Stretch and then afterwards we come back after five minutes. So I'll see you three thirty-seven. Okay, I'll stop sharing. So sharing again my screen. Okay, so we're right here the importance of the coefficients, the importance of balancing your chemical reactions. That way, later on, the values that you would be getting would be acceptable or correct. <clears throat> so in terms of stoichiometric calculation, 
Now, from the mass of, let's say, substance A, we can use the ratio of the coefficients of A and B to calculate the mass of substance B formed if it's a product or use or used if it's a reactant. Okay, so you use the coefficients by as a as a, the term that is used here, mole to mole relationship to connect one substance to another if you intend to determine the amount of that thing that is produced or being used in the process of forming another. So you can see here the process. If you're given the grams of substance A, you use its smaller mass to convert the mass in grams to moles of A. Then since it's already in moles, you can connect it to B, how much of B will be produced if it's a product, or how much of D will be required to react with A by using the coefficients of A and B from the balanced equation. You'll be getting the most of B because you have your most of A, connect it with most of B, and using the molar mass of B, you'll get the actual amount in grams of B, whether grams of B produced or whether grams of B needed to react with A if B is a reactant. Okay, I think it would be clearer if we have a specific example. Okay, let me click. Okay, take for example, glucose here. One mole of glucose needs to react with six moles of oxygen in order to produce six moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water. Now, before you do anything, even if this is provided already, you have to check whether you have a balanced chemical reaction. So in this case, carbon in this side is six, you have six here. Hydrogen in this side is 12, you have six times two, that would be 12 also on this side. Oxygen is 6 and 12 in here, that would be 18. Oxygen in here is 12 plus the other 6 in here, that would also be 18. So this reaction is balanced already. So you don't have any fear that any calculations that will be based on this balanced chemical reaction would be wrong unless you have an error in the manner of conversion. Of the provided amount, in this case, it's one gram of glucose. So you, there's a need for you to convert this to moles. That way you can use the mole to mole relationship here provided in this balanced chemical reaction to come up with whatever is unknown. Okay, let me just continue clicking so you will see what we have in here. Okay, you could see this broken line that says there's no direct calculation from determining how much of water is produced because water is on the product side. How much of water is produced out of one gram of glucose? Okay, so what you need to do, just like what was presented to you in the previous slide, if you are given mass, and you are to and you are asked to determine the amount that is produced whether it's product or reactant that is needed to react with that particular amount you need to convert it to mole so you start with 1 gram of glucose we will calculate the number of moles of glucose by using its molecular weight so we have 180 grams of glucose for every mole of glucose. Now, I'm not sure if this is presented to you in senior high chemistry. You may wonder, nga asuli na how one gram da o, the so nga ang ang atomic weight, or rather, sorry, not using atomic weight as the term, nga ang molecular weight or formula weight is written na one mole for every 180 grams. So there's a Para makancel, miss. Correct. Para makancel. Sige. So, kung magmasakit ko gani, kabalo na ko nga si John, pwede ko ma-request. Okay. Pwede na din si John sa inyo katulio. John knows fully well his chemistry. So, suliun mo mangid siya okay, para makancel ang drums. Okay? 
Diba? Si Mi Ara Pagida. Luwas kay John. So, kung masakit si Miss Ali, ganit, eh, mga ilang kung sa inyo help na. Sige be, i-review nyo to inyo classmate para mayo ang resulta sa inyo quiz or exam. Okay? So, sulion. Now, uh, I will write here. I will annotate. For the, for the information of those who are not why not following this? Okay, so you have, as what is stated by John, you have one gram here. I will not anymore write the formula. In order to convert it to mole, dapat sulion mo din siya, ang formula weight. So dapat ang grams ara sa dalong para mag-cancel. So you have one mole here. So you have already mole. So since it's already in mole, the Basiling a connect using mole to mole relationship. So use the coefficients to find the moles of water. So you see this one, one mole of glucose. This is understood to be one for six moles of water. So I will place here, since so this is mole of glucose, I will place here one mole C6. Hindi ko na pagtapos ang class. I don't have space. And I write here six moles water. So now I cancel the mole of glucose. I have now six moles of water. Now, this is six moles of water. I want the mass of water. What will I do to have the mass of water? So what you can do is use the molecular weight of water. Dere ko siya i-continue ang i-multiply dere. Tungod kay ang moles of water ara na sa babaw in here, then you can write here 18 grams of water for every one mole of water. So makansin naman ni ang moles of water. Giving you a final unit which is in grams of water. And that would be the 0.6 grams here that you see. What does that mean? That when I use one gram of glucose, I will be producing, if I have enough oxygen for its full, uh, for the realization of this particular equation, then I will be producing 0.6 grams of water. So you can check that using your calculator. Okay. If you want to check using your calculator, you have 1 divided by 180 times 6 divided by or times 18. Times 18. So you have 0 0.6. 0 0.6 as the answer for the grams of water produced. Inesha class, simply an illustration on how we use the provided balanced chemical reaction or how we use the balanced chemical reaction if it's not yet balanced as provided in determining amounts or quantities of species that either reacts or are produced out of this same reaction that is provided to you. Okay, so you manipulate the units, so you manipulate the units of what? Of your molecular weight or your formula weight. That way, you get to cancel the given unit and uh, produce or come about with the desired unit. That way, you can do mole to mole relationship. So the, the key actually uh, in here class, the very heart of the process of stoichiometry is in the mole to mole relationship taken from the balanced chemical reaction. So here, six moles of water produced for every one mole of glucose used. Any question? Any question? Yes, may question ko, Miss. Yes, go. Ang third step na wala pa sang 5.11 miso. Ini? Pan oh, Miss. Uh -huh. Paano siya nagamuna, Miss? 1 divided by 180. Okay. Ah, sige. <laughs> okay. So, ang um, ini siya, multiply mo sa name, maamun ni siya. Ini siya, i-multiply mo sa sini, maamun ni siya.
Sige. Okay, miss. Thank you. Sige, sige. Hara, papamangkot. So, basta gani, nakabox. Diri isa sa aton process na na siya sa ginubra tadi. So, gin-multiply ta ini siya with this to give this one. Ini siya, gin-multiply ta with this to give this one. This one multiplied to this to give this one. Okay? Sige. The more questions? 